Hello, and welcome to the Happy Horror Time podcast. I am Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmert. And there is no better way to bring horror home for the holidays than during a bloody good family reunion. And today's special guests know a little something about that, as we have the writer, director, producer, and star of the first Reunion from Hell film, along with its upcoming sequel set during Christmas time, Reunion from Hell 2. We also have true horror royalty here with us as this star played beloved heroine Alice Johnson, who defeated Freddy Krueger in both A Nightmare on Elm Street Parts 4 and 5. But in this movie, she faces a very different villain who's not just in her dreams. Please welcome to the podcast, Reunion from Hell 2's writer, director, producer, and star Hayden Newman, along with the film's leading lady and horror icon, Lisa Wilcox. Thank you both for being here. Very, thank very you. Yes, thank you for having us. Of course, of course. So look, we would love to know just like a little bit about both of your backgrounds. And let's start with Hayden. Where are you from originally? And do you remember how your love for horror began? I am from a small town in Alabama. It's called Valley. It's uh, about 20 minutes from Auburn University, 20, 25 minutes. And uh, my love for horror actually began when I was about three years old. Uh, My babysitter at the time uh, was tired of watching my favorite movies, which was The Wizard of Oz and Beetlejuice, and decided he was going to trick me into watching Halloween 4. (laughs) That's a great movie movie for a three-year-old. Great movie for a three-year-old. And um, that's where my love for horror began was with at three years old for Halloween four. So, yeah. Wow. And Lisa growing up, um, how did you become an actor and what horror film brought you like the most scares? Horror started at a very young age as well. It was more about though, about like on Saturdays, I grew up in Missouri. We had a basement. So my sister and I, we had a, this fabulous basement, a piano down there and we'd roller skate, you know, pull up the rugs. It was amazing. But, and every Saturday was of course, cartoon morning. So, and then after cartoons would be the monkeys for 30 minutes, the monkey show. Remember the monkeys? Oh, yeah, of course. The monkeys. Okay. Oh. And then all afternoon, it would be like twilight zone, black and white, Frankenstein, Dracula, all, you know, creature movies. And I just fell in love with horror. And then I read uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. That was my first novel in fourth grade. No, it was not on the reading list. (laughs) But but my mom would take me and my sister to the library over the summer and we'd get all these books and Bram Stoker and I'd pick that one up and fell. Just, I've always loved horror. I mean, that is awesome because a lot of people who kind of start their career in horror may not have been fans of it before, but it sounds like before even Nightmare on Elm Street 4, you were a big fan of horror. I absolutely was. And uh, we would go to New York um, and see Broadway plays and we saw Dracula, (laughs) the Broadway play. And uh, yeah, I've always just been fascinated with scary stuff and and also like ghosts and poltergeists and, you know, that whole underworld thing has always appealed to me. So it's interesting enough that I ended up <laughs> in Night Run Elm Street. I know. I love it. And, and Hayden, you said Halloween 4 started you, but as you grew up and were able to actually choose the movies that you saw versus being exposed to them, are there any series or movies that really like made an impact on you? Well, you know, Scream made a huge, huge impact on me because it was the first horror film I ever got to see in the movie theater. So it was very impactful for me. Um, you know, Halloween 4 started it. And then I went in to Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, for several, several years, funny story, several years, I would not watch a Friday the 13th movie. Because when I was around three or four, uh, I think it was my sister and brother, all of them were who are older than me. We're watching Friday the 13th part two. And I walked in right on the scene where Jason jumps in and grabs Jenny through the window. Oh, yes. And of course, he does not have that mask on. So it terrified me. 
terrified me. So for years, I wouldn't watch a Friday the 13th film. Oh, it's my favorite. I know this is. I so... mean, don't I love an Everton on the Street? Of course, yes, of course. We we all we have this debate on the podcast all the time because, like, and you you both should know. So Tim has always been like a Friday the Thirteenth person. I've been a Halloween person, and my boyfriend Jacob, who's our producer, is a nightmare person. So we have the three big ones now. Just so you know, we love all of the series, but we always have the debates between the three of those. But I can <laughs> remember that scene specifically where Jason jumped sin and be, we were lucky enough to have Amy Steele on the podcast and she told us how sh- terrified she was to film that scene so I can imagine as a young person watching that she oh, had to yeah. shoot it three times yes exactly um <laughs> You know, before we dive into the reunion from hell movies our now our listeners would probably murder us if we didn't ask Lisa just a few questions about the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, because I agree. So we've heard that there is a great story about how you landed the role of Alice in parts four and five. Can you tell us about that and just how that whole audition went down? Well, it was because in the 80s, I was this natural platinum blonde girl with all the makeup, you know, and like, look like a cheerleader, you know, person. Right. So, uh, so I was submitted for the role and, and I was so, I was super excited. My manager told me, submitted me for Nightmare on Street. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, and, uh, but they wouldn't audition me because my, I just didn't look at all like how Alice, you know what I mean? So, um, Anyway, Annette Benson is the one who told me that they went through hundreds, auditioned literally hundreds of actresses for the role of Alice, and they could not find their Alice. So they're going through their reject pile, and they finally gave me an opportunity to audition. So I went, and I went with like dirty, stringy hair, no makeup, pale yellow, which is like my worst color. And I had a call back on a Friday. And I read with Tuesday night because she was the first one cast because she was reprising the role of um, Kristen from three nightmare three. And um, I was getting married that that uh, Sunday, (laughs) 150 people wedding, big wedding. And I was on my honeymoon in Hawaii when I got the call that I got the role of Alice. That's a great honeymoon. They asked me to dye my. They asked me to red rinse my hair, which they did every morning for seven weeks. (laughs) Oh my gosh! And and all well, I mean, wow! I didn't know. So so at first they were just like, oh, she's too blonde. Like we already have Kristen kind of thing. But then, wow, that is a great story, and to find out on your honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? And so I had to come back early from my honeymoon. And my husband was not pleased with that. But of course, he is now my ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> so joke's on him. Yeah. No, yeah. But it's funny because Rennie Harlan is blonde, blue eyed. You know, he's from Norway, you know, whatever. And then he hired then Tuesday, who had to be blonde because uh, the role Kristen. Then Brooke Thies, who plays Debbie. She was blonde and blue eyed. Here I'm blonde and blue eyed. So... They changed my hair to red, and Brooke is wearing a big ass uh, wig. It's huge. <laughs> it is huge. Yeah, that hair is huge. Well, look, it just just so you know, it's like it's no wonder that you're so beloved in horror because Alice is just such a relatable character, you know, because she starts out kind of shy and introverted, and then there's this big major arc where she becomes stronger and a fighter, and you know, eventually defeats Freddy twice. But what we were wondering is after part five, was there ever talk of bringing Alice back for another film before they went in a completely different direction with Freddy's Dead? Because, like, as Alice fans it was kind of heartbreaking that she survives two films does so well everybody falls in love with her and then they're like hey just go totally (laughs) different direction i i would say it was bad strategy on their part quite frankly the the powers that be you know um but you know i have no say in it at all and i get that i understand that like heartbreak too because like you know alice was relatable you know and it's like, OK, let's say she does finally get killed. Let's say if it was, a, you know, in a, another nightmare, you know, but Alice would probably die for her son or, you know, for some very special reason, you know, mm-hmm. but she would at least get one more fight in, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there was just no talk. And then suddenly they're making Freddy's dead and you're like, no. uh, they just I mean, went completely it's like a soap. polar, completely crazy different. 
Yeah. And, and Hayden, um, obviously you have seen um, Lisa in her film, Nightmare on Street 4. Um, yes. Is there anything um, particular about Lisa that attracted you to cast her? And what were your thoughts on those movies in particular as you, when you saw them probably a long time ago? <laughs> well, you know, Nightmare 4 was a huge, huge impact on me. It's, you know, one of my favorites with three and one. I always relate it to the character of Alice because, like Lisa said, Alice had this huge story arc. And um, I'm sure you know, being a member of the LGBTQ community, we looked up to those characters as being, as we were bullied as children, we looked up to them as heroes. Yeah. Um, they overcame their bully. And, um, you know, Nightmare 4 was a huge, huge film for me. And when Alice does her, when she's getting prepared to go fight Freddy and they've got the great music playing and she's, you know, taking everything and, <laughs> you know, from her friends <laughs> that have been killed with her to fight Freddy. It's just a very inspirational scene. Absolutely. I mean, I saw an opening day. My brother took me. I I love it. I watch it every year. Um, so Lisa, um, when did you realize that the fandom of Nightmare on Street Four, like, was there a time where it disappeared and then it came back like full force, or did it never go away? What What was the first part of the question? When do you think you first realized there was such a fandom behind these movies, oh. especially your installments? Oh wow. Um, well. I guess I realized it when I was like at the mall and in a clothing store and, and these two teenagers were like, you know, over there and they're looking at me, not like a person, like she's like to her friend. That's, that's Alice Johnson. Alice Johnson is right there. She's there. Look, she's there. And I'm like, hi, but they didn't treat me like a human. They were like starstruck. You know what I mean? And I went, Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 Um, so I think that's when I realized too, but also the box office hit that it was all summer. And there were big movies that came out yeah. that summer in August. And we stayed at, at top of the charts for six weeks, yeah. six weeks, you yeah. know, and that's pretty remarkable for a horror film yeah. because back then doing a horror film was like, you know, you're being slutty, you know, it was like not mm -hmm. respected. Even though, even back then, doing TV was considered, oh, but theater is the only way to act. I mean, that's <laughs> right. really the only proper thing. <laughs> and I did lots of theater, and I was a theater arts major at UCLA with a degree. Um, so it was it was a, a change in time about how horror films were looked upon, you know, that the horror films can have a really good story. You know, it's not just some chick running around with her tits hanging out, you know what I mean, <laughs> and getting no. slashed. <laughs> yeah, that's You know, similar. it was an intelligent yeah. film. You know, yeah, yeah. That summer was like very memorable for me because it. I feel like it, um, Nightmare on Street Four just broke into the mainstream. Like I don't, I don't. I remember people not thinking it was a horror film. It was very. Yeah. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. It, but it isn't. It yeah. honestly, I think it's a it's a great date film. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's a great. Oh yeah. There's enough scares where she can grab his wrist and go, oh, you know. But it's also an intriguing story. And, and all, and the characters are so, you know, relatable. You and, know? and, you know, speaking to what Hayden's point about Alice's character and how it being someone to look up to, especially then what I love about the any of the movie is that you kind of are the one who goes and rescues your boyfriend. You know, there's none of this, <laughs> like, let yeah. the man do it. Like he's the one, he, you know, you go and rescue him and you, and I just love that they did that, that it had a very strong, empowered female and even part five that both females survived, you know, nothing against yeah. the males, <laughs> but it's just, it was nice to have that kind of role reversal especially back then. Um, it, one yeah, more question. It was definitely a female powered film. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, there hasn't been a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie since the remake in 2010. But let's just say if New Line wanted to do a new film and bring Alice back after all these years, would you be up for reprising the role and taking on Freddie another time? You betcha. Uh, <laughs> good answer. answer. We we you always ask you. these stars that have done such memorable, iconic characters, especially ones that are still alive. Would they be up for that? And 
considering now it's like popular to do the requel type thing where you bring back legacy characters, you know, mm -hmm. I, it, it's not with outside the realm Anything's of possibilities. Possible. Anything. Yeah, possible. no. And even, um, you know, even a fan based film that brings Alice back or something. I mean, I think we need, we need, a, a, we need a conclusion. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And you heard that, listeners. Yeah. We need to I bring mean, Alice back. Freddie's yeah. dead is fine, but I I like the I, I like the soap opera between you and Dan. Yeah, well, Freddie wasn't Freddie's dead wasn't quite a conclusion. Well, you know what was, that's what yeah. I mean. Like yeah. it wasn't I I yeah. like to see you. Yeah, you know. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> listeners. Hello. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you Let's for indulging it. us. Well, I'm and still alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for indulging us with the nightmare talk. But um, moving on to the original reunion from hell. Now, um, Hayden, as of this interview, you had mentioned that you're waiting on a release date on Amazon and Tubi, but the physical mm -hmm. copies are available for purchase, correct? Correct. Yes. And I know this was your first feature film that you had worked on. Is that right? Also? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So can can you take us through kind of how it all came to be, just from like where you got the idea for the movie to how you put it all together? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny. The idea had been running in my head for years. Um, I wanted to do something that I felt because we were at a point in horror where it was ghost stories, found footage, ghost stories, found footage. Um, so I wanted to do something that I, as a fan, would want to see. And um, I had went to a convention. Uh, I go to a lot of them. I had gone to a convention. And oddly enough, I don't go to a lot of panels. But I went to this panel on uh, independent filmmaking that was hosted by Michael Bean, who was in The Terminator and Aliens, yeah. and his wife, Jennifer, and Michael simply said, you know, if you want to do a film, what's stopping you? Just go do it. So I got inspiration from that. And I went home and turned out the first draft for the first film in about seven days. Oh, wow. OK. And that's, um, that's quick for a feature. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I had the idea in my head already. So that's where it started was really Michael Bean. If you're listening to this, you gave me the inspiration <laughs> to follow my dream. Our number one listener, <laughs> Michael Bean. <laughs> no, no, that's that's really cool. And then did everything just flow from there, like in terms of assembling a crew and the actors or how did that all happen? Um, I won't say everything flowed from <laughs> <laughs> um it was I, I will tell anybody who wants to get into this business it's a lot of hard work you don't stop and it's not easy it's not easy at all you have to have thick skin um and assembling a crew and a cast it can be easy and it can be hard i was lucky yeah. well you had a great that. cast Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and which did but you it's enjoy so true. More? there's so many moving parts to a film to a film it like it, you just can't in front of the camera behind the camera before the movie starts script it, it, i mean people i don't people don't realize so many moving parts to me it's like a miracle that yeah. a film is even made at all. I totally agree. Can we, yes. So um, Hayden knows this because we've spoken, but we made a horror short film a few years ago. Again, short film, 15 minutes. And that, getting every aspect of it together, was so difficult. So, I mean, my hat's off to everyone behind the camera, in front of the camera, who puts together a film. Because just from working on a 15-minute short film... I know how much work we know. Like seven months? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so much every part from color coding to music to acting to editing to catering to serve services. And that's a big one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah. And, and Hayden, which do you prefer, being in front of the camera or behind the camera? You know, I enjoy them both. I have been lucky. I was lucky enough to have an amazing co-director, Sam Hodge who when I'm in front of the camera, he's behind the camera and me and him work together. It's like we just work together so well. So I was lucky in that aspect. That's that's awesome. And, you know, look, as horror nerds, 
what we loved about reunion from hell was how many of our favorite slasher films it pays homage to i mean and let me see if i because we actually took some notes okay from the company name strode 78 films to the <laughs> jack on the jack in the box <laughs> jack in the box in the bed which kind of reminded us of april fool's day to of course tons of scream references like the opening scene you know with the phone call the sheriff prescott the fraternity letter necklace that your character riley wears um i think even some dialogue from Scream 3 and 4. So I was just wondering, would you say this the first movie, was that made specifically for fans of all these great slasher films? And did we miss any references? <laughs> well, I would say it was made for fans, definitely made for fans. Um, there's obviously references all throughout Easter eggs. Obviously, the Connor surname, our last name, is a huge reference to the Terminator. Yeah, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor and yes, of course. <laughs> not Roseanne's yes. family. I know, not, not. So wait, wait, it wasn't about the Connors on TV? Totally. No. <laughs> no, that is awesome. And in the original Reunion from Hell, the role of Laurel Connor is played by Night of the Demons final girl Kathy Podwell. And just wondering, what was it like working with her on the first one? And, and did you know why she didn't return for the sequel? Or was there any specific reason? Um, Kathy was absolutely amazing. She's an absolute doll. Some family issues came up and that's why she could not return for the sequel. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Yeah. But the loss of Kathy meant that the role of your mother opened up for Lisa to play in Reunion yes. from Hell too. And so Lisa, I'm just wondering, when did you first meet Hayden and how did you get involved with this project? I knew you guys were going to ask this question. I was racking my brain. Hayden, help me out here. How um, did we meet? I emailed you. I emailed you. Through my website or something like that? <laughs> No, through, through I Bridget? contacted you through Facebook originally and you gave okay. me your email. Yeah. I had a feeling it was either like Instagram or Facebook or something like that. And yeah. And then uh, you emailed me the script and I said, I'm in. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and did you go back and, and a watch? Lot of, a lot of work actually comes that way through Facebook. Facebook Messenger and um, Instagram messages. It's very interesting. I think that's great. The power of social media. Well, but that's what's so great about social media because, you know, obviously people use it to for <laughs> nefarious reasons, <laughs> I'll say. But like things like that where you can get in touch and have access to people that you wouldn't have been able to have access to in the past and in like yeah. a non-threatening way, you know, it's just so yeah. nice to have that. And yeah. did you go back and watch the first movie? And uh, what were your thoughts on the character of Laurel? Oh, I thought she was darling. Oh my gosh. I, she was just darling. But, you know, Hayden and I spoke too. And it was like, cause I'm a different um, energy than, mm -hmm. than, uh, than uh, her, you know, but Hayden was more like, no, just do your thing, Lisa. Right. I mean, yes, you weren't like mimic, mimic her or anything like that, you know? So, um, and maybe it is going to be confusing, I guess, from one to two, because I am a different energy. But but I think overall, I, it has really great impact. Well, and oh, here's yeah. the thing. In horror, people sometimes recast, as you know, with Tuesday Night and Patricia Arquette and the Nightmare movies. But also, I mean, and I'm just making this up, Hayden. It's it's your movie. But, you know, after Reunion from Hell 1, the family's been through a lot. So maybe the energy of your character has changed. Has changed. Right. <laughs> yes. Stronger. Um, Definitely, yes. you know, stronger. And I was going to say, speaking of the end of the first movie, you, Hayden, you reveal one of the killers, but there's definitely a second killer who is never identified. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming will come into play in the sequel. So I'm just wondering, can you give listeners kind of just a quick synopsis of the second film and kind of where things stand in the story when it opens? When we open up into, um, it's been two years since the events of the first film. And my character, it's Christmas time. My character and a group of friends are going to spend Christmas in the mountains with my mother, who is played by Lisa. <laughs> and um, we're just wanting to celebrate Christmas. We're trying to move on with our lives. <laughs> Act, you know, the events of one obviously changes people, either for the good or the bad. But I really feel that Riley and Laurel are both in a place when two picks up that we've made some peace 
from the events of one. And we're just trying to move on with our lives. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of reunion from hell, too, what makes this movie even more enticing for horror fans is that, you know, um, Lisa Wilcox is not the only Elm Street alum in it. Um, It also stars part two's leading man, Mark Patton, and Alice's boyfriend, that major league hunk, Dan, from, (laughs) from parts four and five, Danny Hassel. Hayden, can you tell us how you got Mark and Danny involved and who they play in the sequel? Yes. Um, well, Mark got involved. There's a character in two who is he's a reporter. He um, his career was kind of going downhill. And then he covered the events of one and it skyrocketed his career. And me and Lisa were on the phone one night and we were talking about it. And she was like, have you ever thought of working with Mark Patton. Mm. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't think he would ever, you know, respond or anything like that. And Lisa said, well, email him and, you know, talk to him and tell him I'm involved. And uh, that's how Mark got involved. Wow, Mark Lisa. Is so yeah. good in this role. You guys are going to flip out. He's hysterical. He's, oh, so yes. good. We can't wait. Oh, be, uh, he was so brilliant. That is amazing. And so nice of you, Lisa, to like recommend and, and help with that. And I'm thinking, are we thinking like Gail Weathers-esque for the character of Mark? He's, Mark? he's very much a Gail Weathers type, yes. <laughs> and h- how about- he's a how- weasel. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. tell us about um, Danny Hassel and who he plays, because, you know, people are going to go nuts, Lisa, over you and Danny reuniting in a film uh, like this. Yeah. Well, well the way he plays. Go ahead. Go ahead. Katie. Uh, uh, the way Danny got involved was me and Danny did a convention in uh, Virginia Beach and we were neighbors the whole weekend. And at that point. Lisa was the only one attached. I believe I was in negotiations with Mark. I cannot remember because it's been over a year ago. Um, And me and Danny kind of hit it off. So over the weekend, I finally said, you know, would you like to work with me? And he said, yes, of course. So um, I wrote the character specifically for him. He was not in the first draft. And I'll let Lisa tell you who the character is. Oh, yeah, Lisa, what was it like reuniting with Dan? Well, instead of lovers, we're now brother and sister. <laughs> oh, very, very different relationship. <laughs> very different relationship unless you're taking it in a very weird direction. No, no smooching, no smooching. <laughs> so you play, okay, so this is Riley's uncle and Laurel's brother. Yes. Got it. And what was it like working with him again? Was it weird? Was it like reunited and it feels so good? I tell you, it was just like it was yesterday when we did Nightmare 4, you know? And uh, and of course, we've seen each other many times because of the convention circuit and living in, you know, Los Angeles. And, um, you know, we've all stayed, uh, the whole cast of four, we've all stayed in really tight, tight um, connection. So it was just like, it was perfect. It was just perfect. And of course, we already had the chemistry, uh, you know, as brother and sister, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, so it felt very uh, natural. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, no, what we were going to say, because Lisa must have been like between you and Mark and Danny, did it feel like like a mini Elm Street reunion? <laughs> it, it felt like a mini. Yes, it did. It felt like a reunion. And it also felt I don't know how to explain it. It's just like I've known these guys for decades, you know, so we just got along fantastic. You know, and there was no struggles or or anything you know um we just um it it flowed like a well-oiled machine you know it it and it was just it was just so much fun to, to be on in front of the camera with Danny again of course who I adore and to work with Mark who is just a brilliant actor so Ooh, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a blast and we're plus we're filming up in this beautiful cabin up in the mountains and I mean it, it was it was it was really a pleasure. 
And uh-huh. and Hayden, like, I think I know the answer to this question, but it because at first I was like, did Hayden purposely set out to cast like former Nightmare on Elm Street characters or it was, but it sounds like it was just kind of a happy coincidence. It was very much a happy coincidence. It really was. Yeah. And it, Lisa, it just like, worked from recommending Mark and then the fact that you'd already met Danny and, you know, it all came together. And I think it's, it's just going to be a thrill, certainly for Nightmare fans and horror fans to see the three of us, yeah. right? In oh, my God. Are you kidding? Event. I can't wait. Beyond the thrill. In a movie. And, yeah. And, and Lisa, I was just wondering, because we were talking about kind of having a different energy for the character of Laurel. Like, do you um like what do you feel like is your t- was your take on the character of Laurel or how it differed from that character in the first movie? Um, The difference, I think, is through, let's say it's the two it's been two years. Right. And that my character has had to get over something so horrific. So lots of therapy and lots of friend support and lots of, you know, but she turns to into a, a more powerful woman, you know, mm-hmm. to have survived something so horrific and that she um, has a much less fear. You know, she overturns her, her, the, the events and accepting what happened and just becomes a more mature, a more mature yeah. woman. And this yeah. question is for for both of you. I mean, without giving anything away, um, do you have a favorite scene or moment that was fun to film? Yes. Oh, <laughs> please, yeah. whoever wants to go first, but I want to hear from each of you. Um, favorite ahead, scene Hayden, to film? Whatever. My absolute favorite scene to film was actually Mark's first scene he shot. I, you know, we, you write these films, and you, that's. A job as an actor you take these characters from a page and you make them their own so i had no idea how mark was going to play the character and he turned around and delivered that first line and i thought <laughs> okay this is how he's playing the character so um that was my favorite scene to see you know exactly how he was going to turn that character <laughs> That's amazing. I'm I'm telling you, he is like my favorite thing in the film. I mean, and the way it was written to Hayden, the way that character is written and the way and with Mark manipulating that. Oh, my God. Wait till you guys see it. Oh, 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 of course. I I think like Mark makes like a a, like a wacky choice or something. (laughs) You'll you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. How about about you? I just learned so much from Mark. How about you, Lisa? Um, because my, I've... one of my favorite scenes is um, the one that Hayden and I do in the kitchen, talking about your brother, the my son. Event. Yeah, that sweet scene, you know, in the kitchen. Um, but I think my favorite scene filming. Well, I can't give it away, but at one point, I'm <laughs> I'm yielding a bat, a baseball bat. I, I have seen some behind the scenes pictures and I was going to ask you about that because I've seen some pictures of you with a bat, which sounds like someone's about to get a beat down. <laughs> or and I was really nervous about people. it because, you know, I didn't want to hurt anyone. And, the, and then but there's this great guy, James, who like taught me how to, you know, do this like stunt work kind of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and um, ultimately it's like I had it, it was a, I had a blast. <laughs> She was badass with the bat. <laughs> she was. I'm thinking I was going to say which was tougher to maneuver. Uh, the nunchucks in Nightmare on Elm Street 4 or the bat <laughs> in Reunion from Hell 2, Lisa. Go. <laughs> nunchucks, definitely a little trickier. <laughs> you, you know, you got to learn how to do them, right? You know what I mean? But no, just have a little rage and a bat in your hand and one, two, I'm going to do you in. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Home run. Well, um, Hayden, and we've talked about this, but you've mentioned before that you consider um, the reunion from hell movies to be queer horror films. And, you know, mm-hmm. that your character of Riley is non-binary. And we obviously love this because, you know, not too long ago, you'd never see an LGBTQ plus character in a horror movie, let alone as the lead. And we were just wondering, like, how do you feel about the importance of this type of representation in horror films today? And do you think there's been enough progress over over the years one i do not think there's been enough progress uh two i mean there has been progress but not enough mm-hmm. two um i feel that it was important because 
first of all, the horror community is full of LGBTQ plus fans, huge Definitely. fan base, but they are usually portrayed in horror films or in any film or television show as a satire. And a um, yeah, yeah. And it was important to me that it was portrayed accurately, that I could play a character or show a character that a member of the community could look at and say, oh, that's me. I'm being represented. That's what was important to me. That's great. That's a great answer. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, as an LGBTQ podcasters, it's important. We we love seeing this in movies. We love seeing all sorts of representation because, you know, unfortunately, in the 80s, no offense to the nightmare movies like that, but there wasn't as much representation among, you know, especially the LGBTQ community. But as you were saying, there's been some progress made and it's great that you make a film like this that, you know, brings a character like that to to light. So, I, you know, thank you from the community. <laughs> well, I, and I just want to say, too, it was important to me that it was done naturally mm -hmm. because Hollywood has this way of wanting to portray the community as, you know, the the comedian or, you know, that. What am I looking for? That tight cast. I think know? I know. Oh, yeah. I've played it. Yeah. You mean <laughs> o over over the top sassy game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No, I know. And you know and what? Hayden is just a that. guy. He's just a man. He's just, you know, there's no stereotype or over the top or anything like that. He's a human being going through you know, crisis. And that's the yeah. thing. And we're, we're all human beings. And yeah. it's just like the elements of horror don't affect different types of people differently. We all right. go through the trauma, the grief, the fear, the the rage, <laughs> the baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, moving on to without spoiling anything, um, does the ending of this movie leave things open for a third film? And would you both be open to doing a, uh, like to a trilogy or <laughs> I don't know? I will say there has been talks of a third film. There has been treatments worked on. Um, I feel the ending of the second one wraps the story up from the original film beautifully, mm -hmm. but I would not be against doing a third film. I have said if there was a third film, it would be the final one mm -hmm. of this franchise. And I guess, our, can we even ask Lisa if she, because I guess we don't, you can't spoil with the char I know, character's does she survive? fate. So give us the most general answer to that question. If you would be, what would, would you be up for playing Laurel in a hypothetical third movie? If Laurel survives. Hey, if Hayden will have me, sure. <laughs> That's awesome. So we, we just have a few wrap up questions um, for you both. And, you know, Lisa, we know that fans have been lucky enough to meet you at various horror conventions throughout the years. And we're just wondering, what do you enjoy most about attending conventions? And what's the most common thing that you get asked? Oh, conventions. I just adore them. It's just amazing because I meet all these amazing people that share their personal experience of how uh, Nightmare on Elm Street affected them or how my character Alice affected their lives, you know, and these, I hear stories that I, I bring tears to my eyes, you know? Um, so it, it is so amazing to, to be a, a performer that can make an impact on someone's life in a positive way. Um, so that is what the main thing that I love about conventions uh, secondly, I love going cause I get to see all my buddies, you know, all my <laughs> colleagues and, and we're super, super tight, super close. We really are like family. So, and you know, we just have a great time and, and all the fans see us having a great time. So we're all having a great time. It's I just was just a, about to ask you, like, if you do, if you keep in touch with everyone and can I ask you a question? Who do you keep in touch with the most? Yes. Of the Elm street, uh, co-stars, I guess, through the, it years. could be through any of the films. Who do I keep in touch with the most? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Hard to say. I would say, well, Toy. Um, he played Sheila. And um, and Brooke Thie. Yeah, Brooke Thies, for sure. And Tuesday. Um, I And Amanda Wist, who, of course, played Tina, Freddy's first kill. You mm -hmm. know, we've met through the convention circuit. And she's one of my very best friends. In fact, I'm 
I'm going to LA on Thursday and I'm going to be staying with her. And she came to visit me recently. I mean, we're just, it's hard to say. I mean, that, no, that's great. And Heather and I, Heather and I are, are super tight too. So yeah, it's, we're family. We're all like, you know, brothers and sisters, seriously. No, that's a great answer because especially for people like us who attend these conventions, like, um, you know, meeting people that we've grown up watching and develop such affection for in person is just, it really makes our day, you know, and it's nice to hear that it means so much to, to you too. Oh, and what is the most common thing you get asked? Oh, Cause I that, feel like um, it's gotta be like some yeah, small detail. The most common is what's Robert England like? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so Lisa, what, what, so Lisa what is Robert England like? <laughs> Hi, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> he's totally, he's, uh, he's awesome. And if you ever meet him, you'll see, I mean, he spends a lot of time with each individual comes to his table to get an autograph and he, and he enjoys uh, what people like people bring these really cool posters and things that we've never even seen. And, and uh, Robert just so appreciates it so much. Um, but he loves when he's asked about something other than Nightmare on Elm Street, because, you mm. know, he had a, He's had a very prolific career. No, yeah, he really absolutely. has. Ask him about Phantom of the Opera, and he will talk with you for an hour. We oh. we had <laughs> Jill Sholin. Yeah, we had his co-star Jill Sholin on the podcast and asked her about the Phantom of the Opera. So we would totally ask him about Phantom of the Opera. Good. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and Hayden, so you have already had the opportunity to work with incredible horror stars like Lisa Wilcox, Kathy Podwell, Mark Patton, and Danny Hassel. The question is, if you could work with any other horror star in a reunion from Hell 3, who would it be and why? You know, I have to go with the answer. It would be Jamie Lee Curtis. because <laughs> <laughs> Not that that would ever. I mean, it could, but not that that would ever happen because Jamie Lee is the ultimate. I mean, all time. Scream queen. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, that, that is, yeah. I mean, well, Halloween's ending, Lori's That's road, true. so we'll, we'll um, see. <laughs> and, and this is just a random question for you, Lisa. Um, you played Florence Henderson in the 2000 TV movie Unauthorized Brady Bunch, The Final Days. I saw that. I loved it. And I just wanted just your opinion on, was that fun or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, what was it like taking on that type of role? You <laughs> guys, you have no idea. I mean, to be on the Brady Bunch set, playing Carol, I mean, and the clothes. And I mean, I grew up with, you you know, Brady Bunch and boy, was that fun to research because all I had to do was watch a lot of Brady Bunch episodes, you know? Um, and it it's, and it was a really weird thing because I had an audition and they was in Santa Monica and it turned out the audition wasn't in Santa Monica, it was in Burbank, which is a very far apart. So they had oh, yeah. to reschedule the audition. I was the last person to audition for the film. I was the last person cast. And it was like a Friday at 4.30 p.m. And I auditioned. And then I'm driving home. And it's like been 15, 20 minutes. My manager calls me and I have my brick cell phone, you know. And he's like, I don't know what you did in there, but you got the part. <laughs> oh, that's wow. awesome. Yeah, you are going to so. be Florence Henderson. I mean, that's that's know, a role. Right? Wow. And get this. Okay, Andres Jones, who plays my brother, Rick. In night yes. four, he has always had this huge crush on Florence Henderson. So oh. it still like freaks him out that I played her in the TV movie. It's really pretty funny. That's a so very he has a crush on you. That's a very interesting <laughs> crush. That's like yeah, you, you he gotta was, have a very a certain type, I think. Stuff. Because, <laughs> well, Carol Brady is like the ultimate mom. So yeah. maybe Andres is into moms. moms. <laughs> he is, right? You know, I wouldn't call her a MILF necessarily, but maybe she is. To some people, she is, I guess. I uh, guess so. I mean, Barry Barry was the, um, the oldest brother. Barry Greg, Williams. Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. cute. Yeah. Wow. Bra that could be a whole nother conversation. Oh, Lisa. Brady so, bunch. We'll just, we'll do a whole oh, nother episode I, I on the Brady stories, bunch. No. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, I am. I, um, I wanted to know. Um, so are there any, what are you both up to today? Are there any other films or projects on the horizon that you can talk about or anything that you're looking <laughs> at or working yeah, on? Yeah. I've been, um, honestly, I've done, uh, five films this year already. And, um, uh, one I did with Tuesday called Bloody Man is actually available on Amazon Prime Ooh. and they're $2.99 or something like that. Uh, and then I just completed a film called uh, Demon Hunter, Time to Kill, 
Ooh. super excited. And this is actually an Irish director and producer production team, but we filmed in Kentucky. So they're going to have it. There's a big film festival that happens in Ireland. And then uh, next year, October, I'm going to be going out there to do autographs and see the whole movie too. Uh, mm. And that one is what's interesting is I've gotten older. I get, I getting to play some more character like roles, you know, which is so much fun. So anyway, um, but yeah, I have a lot of stuff that's coming out. Oh, mystery spot. I filmed this in Texas about two before COVID, just before COVID. Um, very proud of this film. Uh, and uh, that'll be available on a video on demand, mystery spot. And actually me and the other lead actor uh, we were nominated for best, uh, best um, performance. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's, Congratulations. it's labeled as a horror film, but. We didn't win, but I think it's more about um, it's more of a Twilight Zone kind of film, and but it's it's very powerful. So hope you guys can check it out. Mystery Spot starting oh, wow. October seventh. Yeah, I mean, and that's amazing. And we we love your dedication to genre films and things like that, and that you love this genre. You know, I mean, obviously we love it, but you know, there's some people we may that, be biased. Well, but there's some <laughs> some people we talk to that you know maybe they did one or two films and they're known for them, but kind of steer it away from it. And we love you know people that in, really embrace truly it. embrace it and enjoy the genre films. So. I do, I do. And the interesting thing is, if you look like on IMDb, if you look at all my body of work, really only like. 5% of it is horror. Um, but I've been doing more because I left acting for about 15 years when I had my kids and all that stuff. Um, but uh, it's, but it's growing more horror and I love it. I, no, bring, bring it on. That's oh, awesome. I love that. And Hayden, I know you've been b incredibly busy with um, Reunion from Hell too. Are there any other things that you've been working on or are interested in? Well, right now, you know, it's post-production for Reunion 2. It's, editing yeah. it's all of that um that's my main focus right now uh there's ideas like i said and people have already asked like y'all did is there gonna be a reunion three <laughs> i'm not <laughs> thinking about that right now <laughs> you're like uh let me finish with two no we but, totally get um, it i will say you know when i was and this is a testament to lisa when I was faced with, we're going to have to recast Laurel, I sat back and I thought, who is talented enough and who looks similar to Kathy mm -hmm. that can come onto this role and do what has to be done for two? And automatically Lisa came to mind oh. um, because she was the most talented to take over this role and you know, I feel that Riley and Laurel both, when we join them in two, once the characters realize what's going down and it's going down again, each, those two characters are like, okay, well, I'm prepared to die, but you're not going to kill the other one. Mm. And I feel like they're both in that, that spot. Like, yeah, they are ready to lay their life down, but you're not going to get to the other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, we had really good chemistry, Hayden. Oh yes. Uh yeah. the first scene, the first scene we shot, which uh Lisa was saying was one of her favorite scenes to shoot, was actually the first scene we shot of the film. Oh wow. Uh, which was the conversation between Riley and Laurel about events from one. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, look, we have one final question for you both, and we ask this to every single person um, that we interview, and it kind of puts you on the spot a little bit, but you can <laughs> think of anything you want. But what is one thing that you both can tell us, let's say for Hayden about the Reunion from Hell movies, and for Lisa, it can be either about Reunion from Hell 2 or the Nightmare movies. Or the Brady Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> one thing <laughs> that one thing that you can both tell us about your experience working on those movies that you've never told any other interviewer, publication, podcaster, or convention. Elm Street it, friends. It can be, it can be something tiny, it can be an Easter egg, it can be something juicy, it's just something that you've never told in an interview at a convention, a podcast about your experience either working on the reunion from hell um, movies or the nightmare on Elm Street movies. <laughs> ah. I think um, I've, I think I've spilled the beans on everything on every podcast <laughs> or oh. Q and A or um, 
Mm, yeah. I mean, there's one thing I only told once and I can oh. repeat it. And it was actually on Andras's podcast. Okay. I, that I told him and it's, it's not pretty, but the, I'm doing nightmare five and, um, you know, there's this shower scene, right? So they had this big pool of water with a contraption to keep, be able to fill up the shower. You know, of course it was a specially built shower that would hold the water and whatnot. And someone in the makeup department and hair department said that crew was urinating in the pool. Oh. No. Oh. Yep. And oh I God. was like, Oh my gosh. So I actually, um, I said to the uh, second AD, I said, well, it's come to my attention that, and you know, these, the crew is they're in their twenties, they're kids, they're college kids. You know what I mean? They just thought it was funny. Well, guess what? I didn't. (laughs) So I said to the second AD, I said, "Um, it's come to my attention that there's urine in the pool water. And I would like it to be drained and refilled <laughs> and make sure no one pees in the water. Thank you. Oh, my God. I bet you never thought that was a request you'd have to make. <laughs> right? Nope. And uh, but I think they were pissed off at me because it took a long time to drain and a long time to fill that pool of water back up. So I actually uh, had a call time. I was there for 11 hours and didn't even film that day. Oh. And I think they were punishing me. Oh, how would they, how could they be upset that you wouldn't want to be pretending to shower in their pee? Yeah, I think that's a, a, a decent request. Like, I think that's okay. Wow. Well, did, the, did the director of five, I forgot his name, did the director of five find out about that and have I any don't, opinion? I don't, I am, um, I maybe, maybe, <laughs> oh and maybe God. it held up filming or something uh, because we had to drain it and refill it. But you know what? I'm sorry. That's yeah, that crap. is. I think you did the right thing. Yes, I think that is an adequate request considering. Wow, oh, yeah. that is great. Um, Hayden, anything maybe about filming the first movie or any crazy mishaps or anything? Uh, Well, with one, during that final fight sequence, if you watch the movie, when I go down, you hear a loud crack. I actually got injured. <laughs> that crack you hear is my arm. I sprained my arm. So if you watch that scene for the rest of that scene, from the moment you hear that crack, I'm fighting with my left arm. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. I remember we remember that scene. But oh, wow. Did you you, you have to wear a sling afterwards? uh, I did in between takes. Yes. Oh. And there's certain there's certain scenes because, you know, you film a movie out of sequence. So there are certain scenes and they're real quick cuts, a testament to Sam again, uh, Sam Hodge. But they're quick cuts that if you look at my right arm, it's all bruised up. <laughs> How about in the sequel? Any mishaps on set? Did Lisa knock anyone out with the bat? <laughs> um, no, I don't think she knocked anyone out with the bat. Um, actually, I don't think anything really bad happened on- well, no, I take that back. Lisa and Danny had already left. They had already completed shooting. And um, where we were at, we were on top of a mountain, which the owners of the cabin failed to tell us. We were actually on top of the mountain in uh, Searville, Tennessee, right outside of Gatlinburg. And um, we were on well water. And uh, about a week, and a half into shooting, all of a sudden the water stopped. Oh no! Oh. So no one could even take a shower. The well had ran dry. <gasps> oh. So um, we got in contact with the owners of the uh, the cabin, and he was like, "I know what's going on." And for about five hours, we were without water. Ooh. They had to drive three 500 gallon tanks all the way up that mountain to fill oh, the no well way. back up. Oh my yeah. God. Now that sounds like a reunion from hell. Am I right? <laughs> oh, Hayden, I didn't know about this. Oh yeah, my God. Y- y'all had already left. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, that's rough. Between that and the pee water that Lisa had to shower and so, <laughs> note to well, self, don't have water on set. Yeah, so water is a problem in all instances, is what we're learning on films. <laughs> so, wow, that is great. No, those were great stories. So, I just want to very, very, very much so thank both of you. Seriously, um, this has been so much fun for us. Like you guys both were incredible and we really, really enjoyed having you on the show. So thank you so much. I love you both. Thank oh, you. Well, it was a lot of fun. You guys yeah. are darling. Wow. We will be in touch as to when the episode is going to come up, but we really appreciate your time. Really. Thank no. you. Cheers. Mwah. Okay. Take, Take care. care. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Happy Horror Time. This podcast is hosted by Matt Emmer and myself, Tim Murdoch. It's co-produced by Jacob Randall. We release episodes every Monday, and each episode is either a review of new horror films or an interview with a horror star or insider. So there's something for everyone. You can listen to the podcast directly from our website, www.happyhorrortime.com, or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you stream. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Happy Horror Time. We always post the movies we're going to review a few days in advance. So, if you want, you can watch them before hearing our spoiler-filled reviews. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to contact us directly, send an email to happyhorrortime at gmail.com. And to support the podcast, please sign up to be a patron at www.patreon.com slash happyhorrortime. Patrons get access to our monthly bonus episodes, our newsletter, autograph stickers and get to vote in polls to pick the movies we're going to review best of all if we get to 50 patrons we're going to start releasing two bonus episodes per month versus one so tell a friend yeah i'm tim murdoch and i'm matt emmert and we we hope hope you have a happy horror horror time. time